Hello friends, welcome to To The Point. In this session, we will be discussing about stone copper phase. So the transition from stone age to metal age, it was a gradual process. This metallic implements and stone implements, they were used parallelly, but there was no uniformity regarding the use of metals in different parts of India. In North India, new stone age was succeeded by copper age whereas in south india new stone age it was replaced by iron age the metal age it is classified as copper age bronze age and the iron age so we know that by the end of neolithic period man started using metals and copper was the first metal to be used and there were several cultures that were based upon the use of stone and copper implements and that culture is called as Chalcolithic culture. So the earliest settlements that belongs in this phase they are found in southeastern Rajasthan, western parts of Madhya Pradesh, western Maharashtra and eastern India. So in the southeastern Rajasthan two sites are there where we find this Chalcolithic settlements and one is in Ahar and the second is Giland. So these two sites they have been excavated and Ahar and Gilan they lie in the dry zones of Banas Valley. Like Ahar and Gilan there are many other Chalcolithic sites like Jorve, Nevasa and Dhaimabad. So these sites are in Ahmadnagar district and Chandoli, Songon and in Amegon. So these three are in Pune district of Maharashtra. And all these Maharashtra sites, they were located in semi-arid areas. And those semi-arid areas, it were mostly brown and black soil, which had bare and babul vegetation. But this fell into riverine tracts. So some Chalcolithic ingredients, they are found in Neolithic sites in Andhra Pradesh. But their copper objects are not found. And several Chalcolithic sites, they have found in Alhabad region, Chalcolithic culture, so small tools and weapons made of stone. So the people who belongs to this Chalcolithic culture, they used small tools and weapons that is made out of stone and in which the stone blade, it occupied an important position. And in many places, the stone blade industries flourished, flourishing of stone blade industry, riverine tracts. So this stone blade industries, they were not situated far from the hills, but at the same time, this stone blade industries, they are mostly found in riverine tracts. And in certain settlements, copper implements are found in a good number. And this copper implements, where they are found in good number, it is in case with Ahar and Giland. So at Ahar, stone axes or blades they are completely absent but hand axes and other objects which is made out of copper they are found in a numerous number because copper in raw form it was locally available in gillen we find a stone blade industry flat rectangular copper axes it were found in jorve and chandoli in maharashtra People of Chalcolithic culture, they used different types of pottery. So the people of stone copper face, they used different types of pottery, one of which it is called as black and red and it seems to have been widely prevalent. So these pots, it was thrown on the wheel and they were occasionally painted with white linear designs. And this were found on the settlements of Rajasthan. Madhya Pradesh and Maharashtra and they are also found in Bihar and West Bengal with black and red pottery which were made out of wheel and they were painted with white designs. But the people, those who are living in Madhya Pradesh and Maharashtra, they produce channel spotted pots, dishes on the stand and bowls on stands like you can be seen the cups like this. 
so this is said to be a bowl on a stand so like this they produced a bowl and dishes which means it had a larger bowl to store something and it also had a stand below so the people living in stone copper age in south eastern rajasthan western madhya pradesh and western maharashtra they domesticated animals and they cultivated food grains cows sheep goats pigs and buffaloes along with them they hunted deer and the remains of camel was also found in this age and it is not clear whether they were acquainted with horse or what there is a record that this people they certainly ate beef but they did not consume pork so this people they produced rice wheat they even cultivated bajra and they even produced several pulses like lentil black gram green gram and a grass pea and all these cultivations they were observed near river narmada in maharashtra so cotton was produced in the black cotton soil of the deccan region and ragi bajra and several millets they were cultivated in lower deccan so in eastern part of india fish hooks were found in bihar and in west bengal and here we also find rice and this shows that the people belonging to stone copper phase in the eastern region they lived on fish and rice and this is a very popular diet in that part of the country that is in eastern part of india so this chalcolithic people they didn't use a burnt bricks but burnt bricks were used very rarely occasionally their houses it was made of mud bricks but mostly this were constructed with wattle and job and it seemed to be like a thatched houses initially their houses were built with sticks which were arranged in a rectangular or circular pattern like this and then a thatched roof using a rice straw it was placed and this part it was covered with mud and finally it appeared in this way with the rice straws and a mud covered so at in amegon in the earlier chalcolithic phase in western maharashtra we can find a large mud houses constructed with a same materials and all those things and this houses it was large enough with five rooms and some were rectangular and some were circular and this circular houses it almost contained only one rooms and whereas this five room structure it was rectangular in shape so the settlements it became stable in this phase and hence this stage it was called as jorvay culture so the culture it is called as jorvay because its type site it is provided by jorvay and a village it is situated it was on a river called pravara river and this every jorvay village it was a nucleated settlement with more than 35 houses of different sizes like circular or rectangular in shape so the chalcolithic economy it was a village economy and some settlements such as in amegon and those at iran and kayata which is in central asia 
and western madhya pradesh they were fortified and they were surrounded by a moat but this people they didn't have any urban civilization and in this culture there were large number of very small sized stone tools and this stone tools it were called as microliths and the people they knew the art of spinning and weaving because during excavation archaeologist found a spindle owls and this was discovered in malwa cotton flax and silk threads this have been found in maharashtra and this shows that this people they manufactured cloth and there were certain regional differences in this regard to seral structures pottery structures and so on so this eastern india they produced rice and western india they cultivated barley and wheat and chronologically certain settlements in malwa and central india like iran and kayata they were said to be earliest the settlements which are in western maharashtra and eastern india they were very much late when compared to kayata and iran and the burial practices and religious cults of this people were also somewhat different in maharashtra the people buried their dead in urns under the floor of their house in which they are staying that to in north and south positions and for the purpose of burial they did not use separate cemeteries and all those things but the harappans used different cemeteries so about harappans will be studying in the next session and along with the dead bodies pots and some copper objects they were deposited and it is believed that this pots and the copper objects will be used by the dead in the next world so if they have a next birth at that time they will use this pots and all those things they had such a belief and also the terracotta figures have been found and those terracotta figures were of women and this shows that the chalcolithic people they worshiped mother goddess importance of chalcolithic phase and except alluvial plains and thickly forested areas this phrases of chalcolithic cultures it have been discovered almost all over the country in this chalcolithic phase people mostly found rural settlements on the river banks and this river banks it was not far from the hills so this people we know they used microliths and other stone tool supplements and they used a little of copper tools and in this phase the people knew the art of copper smelting so almost whole of the, this chalcolithic community they used black and red wheel turned pots and remember this chalcolithic phase people they were the first to use a painted pots so the art of painting in a pot it was discovered in chalcolithic phase and this pots 
they were they used it for cooking eating and for storing things in south india the neolithic phase it faded into the stone copper phase and so this cultures they are called as neolithic chalcolithic culture so in other parts especially in western maharashtra and rajasthan the chalcolithic people seem to have been colonizers and their earliest settlements appear in malwa and central india like kayata and iran and some in western maharashtra so this chalcolithic communities they founded the first villages in india and they cultivated cereals western indian people they consumed more animal food whereas eastern indian they consumed fish and rice and this was the important diet of this people the burial practices were different like in maharashtra the dead body it was placed in a north south direction but in south india the dead body it was placed in east west position limitations of chalcolithic culture infant mortality it was very high that means the general weakness of chalcolithic culture it is evident from the burial of large number of children in western india so since large number of children were buried in western maharashtra we can say that infant mortality it was very high and in spite of a food producing economy the rate of infant mortality was high and we can identify its causes which might include lack of nutrition absence of medical knowledge or outbreak of some epidemics at any rate the chalcolithic social and economic pattern they did not promote longevity the stone copper culture it had an essentially rural background but during this phase the supply of copper it was limited and as a metal copper had certain limitations so we can say that this copper was not enough strong to fulfill their needs using it as a axe blades and so on so this people they did not know the art of mixing tin with copper so this art of mixing tin with copper it gave a stronger and useful metal and which is called as bronze and this bronze tool it was seen in the earliest civilization of crete egyptian civilization mesopotamian civilization and so on but this art of mixing tin with copper which made a bronze it was absent in india that too in chalcolithic phase so the people of this stone copper age they even didn't know the art of writing they didn't live in the cities as people of bronze age lived and we notice all this elements of civilization for the first time in the indus region of the indian subcontinent and almost stone copper age cultures it exist in major part of the country they were younger than indus valley civilization and they did not derive any substantial benefit from the advanced technology as the people of indus had when this people started utilizing copper like copper hoards they compromised cells harpoons 
swords and so on this people started settling near the upper gangetic basin and this tools it have been discovered near gangetic basin and this shows that the people who used the copper hoards they led a settled life and this where the people you can say they are one of the earliest primitive agriculturist and artisans to settle in a good portion of the dobe so the copper hoard people they were contemporaries of harappans and the ochre colored pottery area in which this people lived it was not far away from the harappa so we can therefore expect some give and take between this copper using people and the bronze using harappans so in the next session we'll discuss in detail about the harappan civilization which is also called as indus valley civilization thank you